if uh, if the internet, YouTube, and, and all the wonderful things we have today had been around in 1979, I bring you the most hated man on the planet, Kenny Lensman. Um, Kenny was a controversial figure before he was even drafted. In juniors, he was convicted of common assault for kicking an opponent in the head with his skate. So, yeah, uh, Kenny Lensman, a very solid player, very good offensive player, who was also offensive in other ways to people, and there was good reason why people were offended. The funny thing is Bobby Clark named, nicknamed him. Now, everybody thinks he's nicknamed the rat because he kind of looks like a rat, and, you know, he played like a rat, and, and the rat term has stuck around since then, and it gets attributed to him. But Bobby Clark gave him the name because of the way he skated. He said he was in the shape of a rat when he skated out there. Wasn't because of his play. It was because of the way that he skated. But that's the nickname that endured. It's the nickname that's still out there now. And it's still what we remember Kenny Lensman as. Um, he took junior hockey to court. So basically there was a system where until age 20, you're a junior player. Ken Lensman said, no. No, no, I want to go play in the World Hockey Association at 19. And he won. Uh, the Birmingham Bulls brought him in, and uh, he played 71 games for them at 38 goals, 38 assists, 76 points as a 19-year-old kid. Uh, the NHL would change the rule as well, and eventually we get to the status we have now where 18-year-olds are able to be drafted, and Ken Lindsman plays a role in that. So he's remembered for a lot of bad things, but he was a part of something that was pretty good for the kids coming up now. Um he was also a guy who scored a Stanley Cup winner in 1984 and then got traded right after. So, Christopher Stieg, you're not alone. Uh, he was a part of the Rat Patrol line in Philadelphia, played for these guys, uh, with Holmgren and Prop. And then he ended up moving on to the Oilers, where he played with Messier and Glenn Anderson. You may have heard of these players. Uh, he played with pretty good players throughout his career. And he's a guy who didn't have an overly long career, but it was colorful, and it was successful. Um, he slashed, he speared, he punched. He did whatever he had to do to get under team skin. And this, of course, is before you had cameras everywhere. So it'd be a little spear, a little, little bit in the ribs, just to get a guy mad so he'd go back for the retaliation, give Linsman a punch if he could catch him, and uh, the referee would give the penalty to the guy who hit him back. So as much as we hate guys who do that now, Linsman made it an art form back in the 70s and 80s, and uh, it, it's it's something that we we may not like when it's a guy, it's against a team we play for, or a, guy, a team we cheer for doing it, but when it's a guy on a team we cheer for, we can say, you know, eh, kind of fun. And I had the idea to do this video weeks ago, months ago, ages ago, even had to double check the channel to make sure I hadn't already done a Ken Linsman video, just specifically on his career. Um, but it's because we all talk about Marshawn and what Marshawn is and what Marshawn's done. And we always make the comparison back to Ken Linsman. So I thought, you know what, we should look at his career and see where it's similar and where it's dissimilar. And I would say that of the two, Marshawn, while yes, he's a dirty player and yes, there's been suspensions, Linsman was on his own level. Uh, February 1983, he was suspended four games for a fight in the stands in Vancouver. Um, I, I will say this, uh, I don't want to give a guy a pass, but I've seen some of the crowds in Vancouver. I can only imagine that this would be the father of one of the current fans of Vancouver. And sometimes, sometimes a fan needs to get straightened out. There are times where a fan gets, there was that fan that fell in the penalty box with Ty Domi. I cheered when that fan got tooled by Domi because sometimes fans need to understand you got to have a separation between yourself and the players. And if you get within reach... I, I believe you're, you're fair game. And I think there there's times where I kind of wish that glass behind the bench could kind of get opened and a guy could reach through the glass and go, what was that? Okay, done. And then put him back and then the glass gets closed. Like, not punch him, just, you know, make sure they they uh, they, they, they stop. They just, you know, because it's... Anyway, that's a whole other argument. But yeah, so he went into the crowd and let them know what he thought of them. 78, 79, he makes his debut with Philly. He had been with their American League affiliate, but he was playing so well that it demanded they brought him up. Plays 30 games, 5 goals, 20, 20 assists, 25 points. Only 23 penalty minutes that year, so he's keeping it nice and calm off the start. But 79, 80, 80 games played, 22 goals, 57 assists, 79 points, or 107 penalty minutes, and the Flyers went to the Stanley Cup Finals that year. 
So his first full season in the NHL, and he's in the Stanley Cup Finals, 80-81. He plays 51 games because he broke his leg in a preseason game against the New York Rangers. 17 goals, 30 assists, 47 points, 150 penalty minutes. He was in his share of fights and Donnie Brooks in his day. Uh, 81, 82, 79 games played, 24 goals, 48, 60, 68 assists, 92 points, 275 penalty minutes. But the Flyers got tired of some of his antics and he alienated guys in the locker room and they thought, all right, this Lensman guy talented a lot of points. We want to move on. So what team's going to call and need some grit? The Edmonton Oilers. Oilers, a, a team of young kids, a lot of skill. Probably thought, hey, we can add him, and, and that'll that'll give us some of that grit we need. So, first, in August of 82, he's traded to Hartford. His rights are handed to Hartford, along with Greg C. Adams. So not to be confused with the Greg Adams that played later for the Vancouver Canucks. Uh, a first and third round draft picks in 83 for Mark Howe and a third round pick. So he was traded for Mark Howe, going to Philly, and Mark Howe in Philly was a pretty good deal. So Philly fans will like that trade all day long. He was then traded to Edmonton before playing a game with Hartford, so don't have those Lensman Whaler jerseys ready. You're not going to need them. Uh, with Don Knackbauer, uh, for Risto Siltonen and Brent Loney. So Risto Siltonen, a good offensive defenseman. I guess Edmonton figured we've got this Rover guy, Paul Coffey. Uh, we've got Charlie Huddy. We've got Kevin Lowe. They put up a decent amount of points. We can afford to move out Siltonen and bring in Lensman and see what he can do. And they give him a shot at the top two line spot, and he does not let them down. 72 games played in his first season at Edmonton. 82-83, 33 goals, 42 assists, 75 points with 181 penalty minutes. And they go to the Stanley Cup Finals. He's in the Finals again. Then in 83-84... 72 games played, 18 goals, 49 assists, 67 points, 119 penalty minutes. Yeah, a lot of penalty minutes and a Stanley Cup. He scores the game-winning goal. Now, in researching this video, I tried to find out why he got traded out of Edmonton, why the guy with that game-winning goal, they said, well, it's been a great two years, and we went to the finals both years you were here, but uh, rat boys out of here. Um... June 1984, he's traded to Boston for Mike Krushelniski. Now, Krushelniski ends up being a, a key guy for the Edmonton Oilers, and he will be traded with Wayne Gretzky to the Kings, and there's a lifelong relationship and friendship created between Gretzky and Krushelniski here, so you can thank Ken Linsman for the Gretzky trade, I, I guess. I not You can't. Uh, you could you could try. I don't know how you'd make the math work. Anyways, 84-85 is first year in Boston. 74 games played, 25 goals, 49 assists, 74 points, and 126 penalty minutes. And he fits right in with the Bruins. Right, guys? Um, You know, the whole rat characteristic and all the penalty minutes and all that. 85-86, uh, 64 games played, 23 goals, 58 assists, 81 points, and 95 penalty minutes. A penalty minute total is low. It's not going to stay there. 86, 87, he plays 64 games again. He has back problems, shoulder problems, different various ailments during these seasons. 15 goals, 34 assists, 49 points altogether, but 126 penalty minutes. So he's right back on the penalty minute train. 87, 88, the Boston Bruins have a pretty good team that year. They have 77 points, 29 goals, 45 assists, 74 points altogether in 77 games. Uh, 167 penalty minutes, and he goes to the Stanley Cup Finals. So with Andy Moog, with Ken Lindsman, both former Edmonton Oilers, they they get swept. Um, so Boston loses in the finals, but again, for the fourth time in his career, Lindsman in the finals, he's 1-3 in, in Stanley Cup finals. 88-89, uh, 78 games played, 27 goals, 45 assists, 72 points, and 164 penalty minutes. Incredibly consistent between those two seasons. However, 89-90, his totals dip. And it's kind of a remarkable drop for Linsman. And I don't know if it's the cumulative effect of injuries. Again, trying to research this, I couldn't really find anything that said, yes, it was injuries that caused this, but uh, 32 games played, 6 goals, 16 assists, 22 points, and 66 penalty minutes. Sometimes it's just that physical game, with all these penalty minutes, all the spearing, all the punching and slashing, because as much as he's giving it out, he's getting it back too. Now, there are some who see him as, as kind of a coward and this and that during this era. I remember that. I remember that comment about him that he would he would dish it out, but he couldn't take it. But, uh, you know, uh, there's definitely been some punishment on his body. Where is he traded? He's traded back to the Philadelphia Flyers in January of 1990 for Dave Poulin. 
I loved Dave Poulin with Boston. I Honestly, that's a good trade for them. He goes back to Philly, plays 29 games, 5 goals, 9 assists, 14 points, 30 penalty minutes, which is low in 29 games for him. And Philly fails to make the playoffs that year. So in the offseason, they let him go as an unrestricted free agent. Uh, in free agency, he's picked up by the Edmonton Oilers. The Oilers say, you know what? We've lost Gretzky now. We've sort of uh, we've won a Stanley Cup, but we want kind of want what uh, Lindsman can bring to us. Plays 56 games that year, seven goals, 29 assists, 36 points, 94 penalty minutes, and it's not he's not himself. He's he's lost a step from where he was just a couple of years earlier, and it can be that quick, where a guy goes from you know 70 points and really solid player to a couple years later, out. Uh, 1991, October of that year, he is traded to Toronto just straight for cash. Uh, they don't want anybody back. They're just like, all right. And Toronto probably thinking, you know what? We've we've got a young team here we want to build with, and and uh, Linsman could help us. He only plays two games with the Toronto Maple Leafs. Has two penalty minutes. He ends up playing for Asiago in Italy. Uh, plays four games for them. Gets five points in those four games, and that ends up being the end of his career. Uh, he plays 860 games, 256 goals, 551 assists for 807 points, 1,725 penalty minutes, which is a lot. Uh, playoffs, 113 games played, 43 goals, 77 assists, 120 points. And in the playoffs, he gets 325 penalty minutes. So between playoffs and regular season, 2,050 penalty minutes. And again, when you play that physical grinding style, you're not just grinding others down, you're kind of grinding yourself down as well. So there you go. The career of Ken Lensman, the one that originated the term rat without originating it himself. It came from Bobby Clark, and it wasn't even because of the way he played. But it's a term that gets thrown around a lot, and uh, Lensman's a guy who gets mentioned a lot when rat-like play is discussed. So there you go. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll talk to you again soon.